All right, everybody. Hey, welcome to EdCamp Global 16. My name is Rhett Olam, and uh, I teach at St. Genevieve Middle School, and you're going to be hearing from my students today. Um, this afternoon at 3 o'clock, I will be giving a presentation over, um, over the same stuff, but uh, over, like, really kind of going more in depth in how you set up uh, everything. And so, but today, we're really going to be focusing on, um, on how my kids what my kids like about doing the uh, uh, mystery Skypes and global collaborations. Uh, here on Google Classroom, you guys can see, we're going to talk about the introduction to the Padlet, why that's why the Padlet's so important. The kids are going to talk about that today. Uh, my students use Snapchat and Instagram. I feel like that's a really strong um, a, a tool to use. It really uh, gives a one-on-one -on -one personal relationship with the people that we're collaborating with. We're going to talk about Screencastify and how we use that with our Padlets. We're also going to talk about our Breakfast Club. In fact, we just had one this morning with a class in Sweden. And then we're going to talk about uh, uh, what they overall like about uh, connecting with people overseas. And then when we talk about the Padlets, we're specifically going to be talking about uh, our global collaborations in Greece and Italy. So when you look right here, uh, this is what I'm going to be talking about next week. I'm sorry, at 3 o'clock today, and this is what you can do to take um, global collaborations to the next level. Uh, the Padlets that we're going to start talking about today are just fantastic. And then all along here is this afternoon, I'm going to go into this in a lot of detail. This is where I find my global collaboration partners, all right, which is really cool, and I think you guys will like that. All right, my kids participate in some other uh, projects, worldviews. You can actually find questions online uh, that people all over the world have posted. My students have, have uh, participated in that. I also have a, a, um, a conference that I did on Global Education Conference that you can find. Um, and then we're going to, like I said, talk about global collaboration, Screencastify, and our Breakfast Club. So really, that's kind of how things are working. You can also go to my website. You're going to see that today at sghistoryteach.weebly.com. You'll be able to see... Uh, the global collaboration stuff and different things that my kids do in class. All right, so like I said, I flew through this real quick, mainly just to give you an idea of the format on what's going to happen today. And so, but really what we're going to be doing now is I'm going to be um, opening up uh, the, um, the different tabs that my kids are going to be using. And so, uh, so there's going to be seven groups, I believe, six or seven groups. They're going to come up here. They're going to speak for one to two minutes, and um, so I, I hope you guys will, you know, uh, get something out of this, and I think you will. And so let me go ahead and let me get my first tab up here, and I'm going to have these guys come up. All right, cool. So, by the way, this is called a tabber, and this uh, this archives the tabs. That way, uh, they're not all up at the same time. And so uh, I think my first group is going to be my Greek unit. Is that right? Italy. Italy. You guys are doing Italy first? Cool. So this is an example of a Padlet in Italy. I'm going to have three students come up here and talk about it. Okay, guys, come on. All right. I'm Clayton. This is Nick. That's Keaton. Uh, we use the Padlet to connect with the students from Italy. This was a great uh, tool in learning about Rome. It gave hands-on experience with the chapter and the people of this country. In the Italian chapter, we learned about the Roman wars with Carthage and Persia, the division of the Roman Empire into east and west, and the eventual fall of the empire. All right. Um, and so what, what did you do on, on your Padlet? With How did you correspond with the, the talk, talk to the, the kids in Italy using the Padlet? What did you guys do? Well, we took, like, we showed them a picture of ourselves, and we wrote our names. And uh, our teacher, Mr. Oldham, he said, uh, put your favorite Christmas present or your favorite song on there. See if they reply back. Okay. And so did they, did they reply back at all? Yep. Yes. And what did they ask you guys? Do you guys remember what they asked at all? I 
I don't think they. I think that's just our questions on the Padlet, isn't it? All right. Oh, and you guys. Uh, of course, we're going to talk about Screencastify as well. What kind of pictures did you take? What app did you guys use? You guys remember the app you used? Uh, webcam toy. Okay. And why would we? What's so cool about using Webcam toy? It gives you like different filters to okay. use. Like what? What kind of filters? You guys remember? Like infrared three. Filters like swirly filters. Sure, sure. Different types of filters. Great tool. All right. Gentlemen, thank you very much. All right. That's a great job. All right. So that gives you guys an idea of what the Italian filter looks like. All right. So let's go ahead now and I'm going to open up the Greek Padlet. This was the very first Padlet that we actually used and uh, it was really a fun time. So we're going to open that up. I'm going to have three guys come up and they're going to talk about that. All right. Come on, gentlemen. Okay, I'm Hunter, this is Luke, and this is David. Alright, so here on the Greece Padlet, we got to ask them like something about their school. And basically everyone asked what their favorite lunch was. They answered, and uh, they also asked us about holidays and down here somewhere. Right there, a uh, person at my school went in depth about Halloween. <laughs> okay, so okay, so we kind of we asked about like the sports and like clothing that uh, they would have over there, and we got some replies. And uh, we have, there was a bunch of people who were giving out information from like, uh, for like Snapchat and Instagram and stuff. And and during the Greece uh, thing during class, we got to like write full sentences in Greek and our own names, and I thought that was pretty cool. All right, gentlemen, uh, now, um, and so did did the Greek students, did they uh, answer you back a lot yes. on this one? Yeah. All right, so did you, did you find some stuff out about Greece? Yes. All right, so, and, uh, um, see, that was our very first one, wasn't it? Yes. Right. Yeah. What did you like best about using the path? Hunter? I like that you got to meet everybody on there. Like you got to meet all the students from Greece. Okay. All right. Very good, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Great job. Great job. All right. So that gives you an idea. So when you first start your uh, global collaborations, you'll start uh, by introducing yourself with the Padlet, and so uh, the kids really get an, uh, a chance to meet each other. Like for instance, you can see this one right here. This is an example of using that webcam toy. All right. Unfortunately, he really looks that way in real life, but uh, the webcam toy tries to, to, you know, tone it down a little bit. Am I right there, guys? Am I right? Yeah. I think that looks that way. All right. So cool. All right. But anyway, so, uh, but uh, the kids have a lot of fun with that. All right. So the next thing we're going to talk about is using social media, uh, Snapchat and Instagram. All right. And my kids use that quite a bit. And so I'm going to have, um, uh, uh, who's, my, who's my next group? All right. Is it you guys? Yeah, okay. All right. So I'm have three ladies come up here. They're going to do themselves and talk to you about Snapchat and Instagram. Okay. Wait, can I see us? Sure we can. Okay. Yeah, Hi, I'm Ella. Hi, I'm Haley. I'm Abby. Okay. So we use Snapchat and Instagram after we meet people on from the global collaborations, and this is Snapchat, and this is what Instagram looks like. So we just use that to stay con or like keep in contact with them. Yeah. Snapchat is where like you take a picture of something, and like you can add a like caption and you send it to people, 
and like you can use filters and stuff, but like once you send the picture, you can never get it back unless like you snap, unless you like screenshot it or save it to your phone. And like, um, you can like add stuff to your story. So like, here's an example of one. Like somebody sent me, and then like your story, it's like where you can just like add stuff to it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then Instagram is where you can like keep in t contact with your friends and you can post pictures and you have your own account and like you can see what other people post like that and then you have your like own page and it shows you what all you've posted and then it shows you who all liked or follows you or Okay, so with the uh, with our global collaborations, how many kids from uh, did you have, just talk about how many kids from Greece or Italy or Mexico or Sweden did you guys have been in contact with? I've been talking to well, I don't anymore, but for a while I did talk to one from Greece. Okay. And then. I, well, what did you guys talk about? Just like what we did at our school. Okay. Cool. Oh, um, like, this one kid—I don't know his name—but he's from Mexico, and he like Snapchat me. Yeah, there's a bunch Snapchat, from yeah, and like he always Snapchat me, like says at parties and stuff. Like, like they had a lot of parties there. I see. Okay. How about you, Abby? And then I followed like two people on Instagram from Greece, I think. Okay. And then they followed back. From, yeah. I see. I see. So, uh, are you keep? Do you still talk to any of those kids now? I still have them on Instagram, but yeah. I don't Snapchat them. No Snapchat. Yeah, I don't. Either. Okay. Cool. All right, ladies, thank you very much. Great. All right. All right. I have three gentlemen that are come up here that are also going to talk to you about uh, what they uh, what they talk about on Instagram and Snapchat. One up, guys. Well, this, I'm Dylan. This is Jeffrey, and this is Justin. And we'll be talking to you about Snapchat and Instagram. Well, Snapchat we use in like to collaborate with other people in different parts of the world. We've talked to like Italy and stuff like that, but um, we we usually just keep in touch most of the time and try to see what they what they've been up to and everything and see how they're doing. But when we um the parts that Snapchat has, there's like different filters and stuff. So there's like, if you take a picture and take a picture, you can like slide over those friends and there's like a filter. There's a filter and stuff. So, and then now you guys want to talk about Instagram. On Instagram, you can post pictures or videos and you can have other people comment on them and you can also text anybody on there too. So if you gentlemen, have you guys had a chance to uh, talk to people from Italy or Greece or yeah. Mexico or Sweden on, on Instagram? I've yeah. talked to people from Italy. I still have their Snapchat and Instagram. Cool. How about you Justin? What's going on with you? Um, the main part of the social media is to keep in touch and have a better understanding with the other parts of the world. Cool. All right. And did you do that? Yeah. Great. Talk to a couple of those guys. All right. Cool. All right. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Great job. Great job. All now, I do want to add that when you are talking about uh, Snapchat and Instagram, it's sometimes that people are uncomfortable using that in their classroom. This is where you really talk about global citizenship. You talk about what's appropriate and not appropriate on social media. Uh, as teachers, a lot of times we really want to uh, uh, have total control over everything. Um, I think at this point, uh, the, one of the things I really like about social media is I like it that you show your kids that you trust them. And, and the only way you can show trust is to uh, allow them to uh, demonstrate trustworthiness. And so that's why I go ahead and and open up the social media aspect because whether you like it or not, this is how your kids communicate. You know, um, old people use Facebook. 
All right, I mean, you know, and it really is, right? I mean, and so students use Snapchat, Instagram. Do you guys use Twitter that much? Do you guys Twitter people? Not really that much, all right? And so, uh, so and, and what happens and what we found out is the kids overseas use that a lot as well, and it's just a way to connect, make that global collaboration really come together. All right, our next, um, our next presenters are going to talk to us about how we use Screencastify, and it's an app that um, that you can use on Chromebook and uh, and we use that in our uh, presentations on our padlets when we communicate back and forth with the kids okay I'm Caitlin this is Kristen Felicity alright screencast 5 basically uh, what we use it for is to like either record like the stuff we're doing on our desktop or like record us talking. And we've used it a few times for our other padlets. We've used it pretty much twice on those, one on each. Um, the first time we used it was probably the one about Italy, and we. The assignment was to like question them about our school. Like an example was, uh, like, do you wear school uniforms and all that? And then the other time we used it was uh, for the Sweden Padlet, and we asked them either a question about snow, music, or sports. We use Screencastify a lot in uh, class too. We use it for every few assignments. We don't use it on everyone, but we use it. A lot, though. Um, we use it sometimes um, for assignments, and you, like, on one assignment, you, Mr. Oldham, our teacher, put some papers with barcode scanners up, and we used it for that once, and we talked about like we read them and answered them. Um, with Screencastify, we can do our work at home and we can explain ourselves to the teacher if um, if we need to. And it's pretty cool that we get to use this because uh, when we're talking to other countries and stuff, it's cool to see like how they talk and all that. Like. Here's some accents that we normally wouldn't hear, and we can uh, talk. We can kind of talk. To, it's kind of almost like talking to them in person, but <laughs> not face to face. So, okay, it's pretty cool technology. One of the reasons why I advocate using Screencastify is uh, for our students overseas. Uh, those kids really uh, they're practicing their English for our kids we're wanting to find out about new cultures so you have to understand the objectives of this global collaboration so when the screencastify allows those kids to hear American accents to hear common English and then they can uh, look at that over and over again the collaborators that I talk to say that that is a great tool so your kids can hear that as our kids said, they really like to, to hear the dialects and the different accents, um, and which, but it also gives uh, those kids overseas a chance to practice their English uh, and, and speaking. And so then it, it, it kind of, it's a stair step effect. So when you start off typing and writing and, and having pictures, then kids get to see that on the Padlet. They then will use the social media uh, to, to talk back and forth. Then that will also use the Screencastify to listen to the questions. So that's how that works. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is what we call the Breakfast Club, and we actually even had one this morning with a group in Sweden. And boy, that was really fun. This, uh, it's that's one of my favorite activities because we actually get to talk to our kids live. Now some of the, the people overseas don't want uh, don't want to do that because. Um, uh, their kids don't speak English well enough, but so far it's worked out fantastic. So I'm going to have some guys come up here and talk about our breakfast club. <laughs> I 
I'm Becca. I'm Erica. And I'm Lily. In Breakfast Club, we get to meet different people around the world, and we would probably that we would probably never meet in everyday life. Actually, we had a breakfast club this morning. We talked with Sweden and exchanged exchanged thoughts about each other's countries, and we asked about their country. It was pretty cool. And some of their names that people have over there, we won't probably have over here. <coughs> okay. So, uh, so uh, what time do you get here for a breakfast club usually? Six thirty-seven. Okay. So somewhere about okay. Yeah. All right. The first one was Greece at six fifteen. Yeah. All right. Cool. And so now, when you come to the breakfast club, Erica, uh, what? Uh, uh, what do I have to eat? What do you eat? Different donuts and pizza and really whatever we want, basically. Okay. So it's important to know that I have to bribe you guys to get here, right? Yeah. All right. Really? Okay. <laughs> All right. So cool. So, uh, Becca, so when you're on, so when, when we do the breakfast club, kind of how does it work? Could you kind of explain, you and Erica explain how how you guys get to talk and, and how you get to, to interact with the, with the students? Well, basically, we use this thing called Google Hangouts, and we talk to people from different places in the world, and we get into groups of three or four, and we ask them questions, and then they ask us questions, and we basically just alternate. Yeah. Okay. And so, so depending on how many people that uh, like, there'll be like what three or four groups. What kind of questions do you guys ask them uh, on the on the on the uh, breakfast club questions? Uh, we ask some things about like what we like to do and if they do what we like to do, like if we share any interests, basically, and like how many siblings they have. Mm -hmm. Okay. One of the questions you guys get asked a lot is if you like football. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, how is that different? There is soccer for us. Yeah. That's right. And exactly. ours is mm -hmm. very different from theirs. Cool, cool. And they uh, uh, they tend to ask a lot of questions like like what kind of questions do they ask us? Do you guys do you guys remember? Um, like school questions. What questions do they ask you at school? What time do we get out? We mm -hmm. get out around three oh five. Yeah, we do get out, and we get at school around seven forty five. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So, all right. Very good, ladies. Thank you very much. All right, so the Breakfast Club is just an outstanding uh, component of this. This kind of wraps up the unit. And if you look on the website here, I have pictures of, of uh, meeting friends in Mexico. That was real time. Uh, this is when we went to Greece. And the, uh, then we also have them from Italy. And this is where we went to Portanone, Porta Italy. All right, the Breakfast Club, I think, is, is the most fun because you actually get to see the students live. Uh, when we first started, our very first uh, one in Greece, uh, we all crowded around the computer. And uh, if you guys remember, we didn't get to really talk, and you couldn't hear. So when we talked, when we collaborated with Italy, we decided to break our students down into groups of four. And so now everybody gets a chance to talk and interact with each uh, with the students. Um, it is really, really a fun component. Now the reason why we had the Breakfast Club, like this morning, Sweden is seven hours ahead of us, so they're in the afternoon. Um, Greece was eight hours ahead of us. When we do Russia, that's going to be a real challenge because they are nine hours ahead of us. So, but the cool thing is, is that class they actually meet in the evenings. They meet around six o'clock. So when I talked to Alana, she said that we could actually do it later. That they'll do it in the evening, and that works out with us. And so that's kind of a cool thing. All right. But with Mexico, it was real time, and that was fun because the kids got to do it all day long. So I really enjoyed that part. All right, so let's see here. Um, okay. All right, so our last part here, we're going to talk about what was our overall favorite part about connecting with schools overseas. Where's, who's my group there? You guys ready? Okay, come on up. Make sure we're doing okay here. All right. See something here? Cool. All right. Okay. Hi, I'm Jacob, and this is Christian, and this is Gage, and 
we're going to be talking about what we liked overall over the whole uh, collaborating with people all over the world. Right. Um, my favorite part was being able to talk to different people throughout the world and learn about each other's cultures and what they enjoy doing and seeing the similarities between what they do and what we do in our everyday lives. Uh, my favorite part about the global collaborate, collaboration was seeing their classes and our classes and how different they are in, from different countries. And my favorite part was just meeting people you don't usually meet every day and seeing how their styles versus our styles go and our trends versus their trends. And it, it was just really awesome. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. Nice job, nice job. All right, okay. So I'm going to wrap this up, and I know this was supposed to be an, an hour collaboration. It's probably going to be closer to a half hour today. Really what I wanted to demonstrate today with you guys, uh, with everybody, is how, uh, how the global collaboration affects the kids. Originally, I thought this would be a great opportunity to, uh, uh, to talk to, uh, to, to have my kids learn about cultures, um, from their perspective, like ask history questions about uh, for kids from Greece and Italy and Mexico. What I found out, though, is that wasn't really the focal point of the lesson. The lesson really for us was global collaboration and just getting to know people from around the world. And then for, their, for the kids overseas, it gave them the opportunity to practice their English and, learn, and, and meet kids from the United States. Um, we're going to continue doing these global collaborations. We're going to do these in the United Kingdom, uh, in France, in Russia, in, in Spain, and Germany. And that's what we have planned for the rest of the year. Uh, please join me at 3 o'clock for my EdCap Global 2. And uh, from 3 to 4, that global collaboration is going to be about the nuts and bolts and how to put, put all that together. Uh, every time I, I do one of these, I learn something new, not only from... Uh, the people overseas, but from uh, from my students as well. Uh, I've made a lot of really uh, great education friends. Um, they're very eager to uh, to talk to me about uh, how how I teach my students, and I find new things and new information about how I learn from them. Uh, anyway, thank you for for coming by, and uh, anybody that wants to, to check in at three o'clock, I can't wait to talk to you then. Take care. <laughs>